We're getting ready to hear from Dr. Larry Smith. Let th let's thank God for Dr. Smith at this time. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. All right. I was just enjoying the view. Okay. Um, <clears throat> why are you close to that pole, Bernie? Stay away from them poles then. Okay. <laughs> jokey, jokey, like my wife would say. <laughs> Stay away from that pole there. Get away from them poles. All right. Let's get our notes out. You know, I encourage everyone, everyone to, if you don't have a notebook, iPad, please go old school, get you a pen and paper. It'll help uh, your retention value. Father, we give you all the glory, Yah, in advance for your word being taught with clarity that it will be able to be received through the illumination of Holy Spirit who will bring understanding. We thank you for it all. We take no credit for nothing to be said or done in the authority of Yeshua. So be it. So be it. All right. So we're going to get into a rough ride. Y'all ready for a rough ride? Got a little rough ride. May make you a little uncomfortable, but it's okay. Growth always come with incomfortability. Growth comes during the times of pressure. You don't know what you got, uh, or it won't be tested until it's tested. Let me put it that way. Because I don't believe you have to go through stuff just to prove that it'll work. I'm, you know, best of bail son, and if you say it work and I think it'll work, you, I don't, I just go on and round this way, okay? But some people don't think like that. So, uh, and at the same time, when you go uh, have a confrontation or a challenge in a particular area and you use the word, uh, you use the laws of the kingdom, the systems, the precepts, the concepts of the kingdom, you know, to change things, uh, that validates and verifies that that product, in fact, does what it should do according to the manufacturer, okay? Now, uh, it's the same way in relationships. And I actually was going to hit this during our special session. I think it's next week at Cordova Library. We're going to be have a vision projection uh, gathering all the congregation partners. We're going to get together again at the library, and we're going to uh, get into some vision projections. And now we know what we're going to get into and that's our number one YouTube video, and that is Soul Ties. I can't, think, be, can't stop thinking about them. So we're going to uh, teach that, that session. I definitely want those who are streaming, those here, just bring everybody you can bring, because everybody dealing with some stuff that don't need to be present in the relationship you're in now. That's almost. Okay? So we're going to uh, deal with that. So we're going to um, deal with this particular area here, that love. Uh, is not the answer. In bonding relationships together, we thank you. I'm, I'm going to let the word teach you, and uh, you're going to see what we really need. If love was the answer, then people wouldn't be falling out of love. You know, you know people had separation, divorce, or what happened? I don't love them no more. See, because we many times get into marriage. I say it's going to be a rough ride now. And relationships for reasons. If you're in a marriage or relationship or engaging into a marriage or relationship for a particular reason that that person is presenting to you, then you are already nailed the coffin of failure. You already nailed, put the nails in the coffin for failure. It's going to die. Why you say that? Because if you're in a relationship, if you like somebody, if you marry to somebody, well, this is the reason I married this person, because she fine. Man, I can look at her 24-7. You know, we get intimate. I want all lights on, everything. I want to see everything. All right? So this is the reason that you got married. Or in the relationship, because she's presented as much as she can to you, even in relationship, so you want to see what's behind the curtains. So that's your main uh, uh, pro, uh, motivator into getting a relationship, and then you have a baby, and poof. Now you want all lights off, sheets on, covers on, blankets, extra blankets, pillows, everything else to cover everything you can. I don't see that. And then you get to the point where as you begin to become resistance, but why? Because the reason why you got in there is gone. You seeing it? It's going to shake some stuff up. Well, I, I married her because she real smart. All right, well... She's not so smart now. So that reason is gone. I married him 
uh, you know, because he got, he got money and, you know, I feel secure and I feel this. And then his job pick up and leave and move. So all that security and money is gone. So now your reason for being in a relationship is gone. You seeing it? All right. So if we are involved in relationships or marriage because of reasons, that's the wrong thing. The primary uh, purpose that you should be involved in marriage or relationship is because you decided to care for and about that person. You decided to care for and about that person and to meet their needs, even the needs that they don't speak. You do stuff for them without them even asking. Why? Because you care. When you care about something, you will be attentive to it. You will make sure everything is taken care of. Y'all, come on now. I told you it would be a little, 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 little rough. It's going to get real rough. Got some potholes down the road, by the way. But you will begin to do things. You know how I'll be watching my wife. You know, I mention something I forget about. Next thing I know, there it is. You know, or I say something and, you know, thought, think about something. We to the point now, then there it is. You know, and same way with her. I'm always thinking about what I can do you know, to make her life less stressful, stressful, excuse me, and to make her more happy. I used to, I quit saying this because she asked me to stop saying it. I used to say, if you're not very joyful and enjoying life uh, when you're with me, then I want to be out the picture. I don't say that no more. Do it, baby. See, she stopped, she stopped. Then I'm teaching now, I'm using for an example. Uh, come a little closer. I need you to get a little closer so I, you know. And see what, you know, she's saying that song, just a little closer and see what you, but anyway. But um, so, you know, that's my motivator. I don't say it, but I want her to understand that I don't want to have nobody in misery. And I'm going to do all I can to make sure that you are so happy, so joyful, that you have to get on crack, cocaine, some new drug, whatever, and be stone crazy to walk away from all of this. You see it? So what, what motivates there that is because is, is I care for, for her, you know. I care for her. I want to care for her. She presented herself in a way to motivate me to want to care for her. She unlocked something on the inside of me without even trying. And that caused me to want to do things for her that I never, ever wanted to do for anyone else because I what? I care. Because if it, love was it and reasons were it, then reasons, conditions, environments change. People fall out of love. Y'all seeing it now? And then they begin to have infidelity in their relationships. Because they see somebody else that they fell in love, fell out of love with that one and in love with this one. Okay. I think I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. Now you see where we're going, okay? That's why we say that love is not the answer Knowledge is the answer. Knowledge is the answer. And some that are probably streaming and stuff like that, you know, if, if you think about getting married after this teaching, you might not want to get married. <laughs> if you are married, you're going to want to learn some things because you didn't know all of this stuff. And then if you have some issues and some problems, the kingdom teaching is going to give you your answer to your problems. And it's up to you to make a decision that I'm going to change as a result of me learning the what? The keys to the kingdom. What are those? The precepts, the principles, the laws, the systems that govern the kingdom of Elohim God. We have to learn those laws, those rules. You can change the way you do things and change your life just by changing uh, what you are adhering to as statues and instructions to live by and engage a different set of laws and those laws will cause stuff that was going on to stop. Okay? All right, so uh, single, this is great. Now you will be able to have more to add to your library to go into a relationship, engage in a relationship. You won't be hanging around somebody because they look good, because he built, you know, and stuff like that. You know, uh, what if the the, the surfing territory move in on him. You know how you go surfing on the waves? Now, what if his belly change into a surf beach? The people want to look at his stomach. They want to go surfing. And then you don't want to look at that. You know, you, now you're looking at Johnny over here. Ooh, Johnny got a six-pack. I like, I like Johnny, but I'm going to stay with my husband. But ooh, child, 
And child, you know, it's, it's okay to go on the internet, look at something, you know, to feel your desires. You young. It's all that stupidity. And it destroys relationships. You know, it affects the marriage tremendously. And it causes people a lot of stress, a lot of sickness, cancer is, come from stress, you know, depression, feeling unfulfilled, all of this stuff because we are designed to be in relationships one way or the other. If you're not married, Elohim, the Father, did not create us to be independent and separate from one another. He created us to blend and network and be a part of the big family. Is that right? Okay, now, what I want to do is, um, that was a long introduction, so I just want to explain to you where we're coming from. Now, you in love, so you're going to get married, but you don't know nothing, you're going, you're going to have some problems. I mean, some serious problems. Let me say this. Failure does not destroy your future. Failure of failing in something does not destroy your future. Why? Because your future is already completed. Your future is on the inside of you. Your future will be there till the day you leave here. So if you understand what your giftings are and what your future is and understand your future has already been completed, then when you fail, you won't give up. Because you know that's not your future. Failure is not a part of your future. Your future is completed in you, and you just missed the path that you need to be on in order to arrive at your destination point, which is your future. So you got to let the failures go and stop being afraid of failure, afraid of getting married, afraid of opening back up again because of a past failure. Now you're negating the future that's in you. Your future is not somewhere else. It's on the inside of us. And our future is what? Our purpose defined. Y'all catch it? All right. So let's look at this. Uh, uh, point number one, first thing I want to hit here is a father. A husband father's number one need is what? Sex. What, what did that say? Knowledge. But y'all said a man's number one need is sex. Right? Mm -hmm. That's in the physical realm. That's in the physical realm. A uh, husband father, and I say this because every husband is a husband father, is a husband source, is a husband provider, sustainer, warrior protector. Every husband father have a warrior protective spirit in him by nature. It's innate. It was put in us by Elohim. Y'all catch this? And we're going to see later on when Isha or the woman tried to flow in this anointing, everything got messed up. But a husband father's number one need in knowledge, because many husband fathers, I mean, sex is a dime a dozen. They're getting that everywhere all the time, any kind of way, you know, free, pay, however you want it. But they still are failing in relationships and failing in their marriage. Y'all catch this? That's not, if he had some knowledge, he'll understand how to put that in its proper place and who he should be engaging with in this area, that he shouldn't be jumping all around, you know, defiling things, defiling bed, marriage is honorable to bed under fire. Y'all catch this? And also the testicles, uh, we get our word testimony from that word testicle. So everywhere you release your seed, they come to seed come from the testicles. There is a testimony or witness everywhere you release your seed. Angels are recording it. We have to give account of it. Y'all catch me? That's where that word come from, testimony. Every time that happens, something is released, there's a testimony, and then what a female, the recipient of that does, she develop a soul tie because one of the laws of soul ties is engaged through intimacy or sexual activity. And we're going to get into that you know, next week. Okay, so a husband, father, number one need is, come on, say it again. All right, now first, first Peter 3, 7, look at it real quick. We'll, get, jump, we'll jump off in here. First Peter 3 and 7. First Peter 3 and 7. That's why it's so important uh, for men to be educated in the kingdom. Men need, I'm going to say need because for the most part, we are off in so many areas. We spend more time working, more time going to the game. We know all about the basketball players, where they come from, where they w was born, you know, uh, uh, what their stats are and all this. And you're asking to quote three scriptures from the Bible. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Jesus Web, Yeah, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, right, right. But, but you should want to try to marry somebody. I'm talking about in the church. I'm not talking about outside in the world. I'm talking to men 
in who are professing to be born again. All right. So I said it's going to be a rough ride, didn't it? All right. First Peter three and seven. Let's read this. What does it say? In the same way, what? Husbands do what? Live with your wives according to the money you make and the ability that you have to provide security to her. Uh, what, what y'all reading from? Husbands, likewise, dwell with them, talking about your wives, with what? Understanding. Understanding how to make money. Come on, y'all talk back. Understand how, understanding of, of, of well, who's going to win the Super Bowl. Understanding of who's going to be the next, next coach of uh, U of M. But, but men understand that, don't we? Come on, talk to me now. Understanding of who, what, what's the latest tennis shoe you should be wearing. No. Dwell or live with your wives uh, with what? Understanding. Come on. One scripture say, uh, one translation say knowledge. Okay, and I'm, we're going to do a word study and show you why they, they use understanding here. But live with your wives according to knowledge. Y'all see that? Very, 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 very important. According to knowledge, giving what? Honor to the wife of Isha, Isha as to the weaker vessel and as being what? Heirs together of the what? Grace of life that your what? That your, that your prayers, plural, may not be what? Hindered. You see that? All right. So now let's look at this. I got it up here. This word for knowledge. This original word for knowledge is doubt. Y'all see it? The word for knowledge is doubt. Now, it means what? Knowledge. Listen. Understanding. Discernment. And wisdom, very important. Knowledge, and I got seven points of areas we need to know them in. Knowledge is knowing. Understanding is understanding what you know. You know why she act the way she act and do the way what she do, does. Excuse, excuse me. You know how she is built up based on the word. If you want to know about a product, go back to the manufacturer. And then discernment is spiritually, uh, spiritually is being able to, to divide good from evil, evil, right from wrong. Some people have discernment, and the only thing they ever see is demons. They never see angels. I got a problem with that. If you got spiritual discernment, why are you not seeing angels? <laughs> Come on, talk to me. Hey, Y'all know anybody like that? Oh, but I, it's a spirit. It's an unclean spirit, and I see it. And then next week, I see a spirit of adultery. And then next week, I see a stingy spirit. Where the angels are. It's more of them than, than it are demons. Discernment is being able, because I'm moving on, to see can you tell when your wife is off and when she is on? Can you tell when she is out of order and in order? Can you tell when the enemy's deceptive plots have invaded your territory or not? Can you make the difference? Can you discern the two? Can you discern when she is getting in a emotional state as a result of some physical thing going on in her body. You think she's just tripping. She's not tripping. She's cramping. Can you discern it? Can you discern that she's not mad at you? Something else happened somewhere else that's causing her to be in an emotional state. And if you're not able to discern that, you won't use your protective warrior warrior spirit to aggressively go and deal with that. That's something that's in your relationship that doesn't supposed to be there. Let me tell you something right here. Every relationship that have an invasion by an outside source is the father husband responsibility to address it and get it out of there. Your wife ain't got no business crying three days over something that knucklehead boy did or that fast girl did. It's your responsibility to teach her Build her up and cause her to understand that your first priority is ish. And ish don't want no emotional drama. Ish didn't sign up for that. And ish is going to make sure that ish don't give you no emotional drama. You didn't sign up for that. I told you it's going to be kind of rough. It's unfair. 
is, uh, is unbalanced. And what happens, y'all call it the in-law syndrome. Oh, mama, always this. Oh, mama, we'll get to that too. Something else coming in, and it violates the covenant rules and laws of that marriage relationship. Or if you are dating to get married, and that's the only reason you should be dating, to get married, or if you are involved in other relationships. Y'all catch this? And then wisdom, you see it? All right, so that word doubt, and you break it down and unlock those layers of understanding based on the original language, doubt it means access to the authority, the government, and the teaching of the kingdom, the covenant of the kingdom, which is the word of Elohim. There's the Dalit, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm going on. I ain't, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's Dalit right there. It's spelled Dalit Lamed Tav, and I took those three letter words and unlocked what I just said to make sure I'm not saying what some translator said. And then I ain't mean to uh, 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 reveal or experience, and then Tav means what? Covenant, but not just covenant, is a covenant relative to the word that you are engaged in and you have been marked by. All covenants have a mark. Y'all catch it? So now, because I have ein, that middle word, a understanding and perception of the covenant of the word through access of the teaching, then I can flow like I need to flow. This is just not any type of knowledge. Y y'all catching it? Yeah. All right. So now we're going to get into this right here. What to know? What to know? This talk about the husband father. I might just touch a piece of this and touch a piece of the other one. All right. All right. So we see what knowledge is now. That's why I say it is imperative for men to know the word. You got to get an understanding of this covenant of the authority of the kingdom of the government. You are the chief governor in your home, in your house, in that relationship. You are not dominating her. We dominate everything else. But relative to what government is, you know, laws and statutes and, you know, upholding this and not let that's your responsibility. It's pretty big, isn't it? All right. OK, so now let's look at uh, Genesis 217. So if we want to know something, what we need to do, go to the who? manufacturer and designer. Now, what a husband father need to know about each of his wife, what a man, even before you get married, you should already be mentored to the point that you a husband father. You don't wait to be a husband father. You need to be one before you get married. So even for a single man, you need to know things about women so we can relate better. Y'all catch it? Yeah. All right, so what to know? Go back to the manufacturer. If you got a problem with a product, you go read the instructions, make sure you installed it right, because there's a warranty on it, right? Make sure you did everything. Don't just throw it out and put stuff together, and then it don't work, and you go send it back. But they told you to read the instructions and follow the instructions, right? If you read the instructions, follow the instructions, then the warranty is intact, right? right. All right, come on, believers, uh, saints, read the instructions. The manufacturer, his instructions is in his word. He has a warranty that back his word up. If you do what he say do, then you'll get what you say he'll get. If something is out of whack, it's because we did not do what? Follow the instructions of the manufacturer of Elohim, the design and creator. You want to know something about a woman, please put some headsets on when you go to the barber shop. Do not listen. OK, do not. I repeat, do not listen. They didn't make her. They can only give you bits of experience about her, of what they had. This is where a lot of erroneous doctrine take place in barber shops as well as beauty shops, where you're in a relaxed environment. You open to do this and you open to do that and they get the yak. And, oh, yeah, child. And you was going on the right path, but you let uh, Sister Bucket Mouth get you off path. You got to go back to the manufacturer. We got to get in this word, period. We got to get in the kingdom. We got to get into it, period. We see every, everything else not working. It's, not, it's just simply not working. Now, what to know Genesis 2 and 17? The word says, but of the what? This word tree is not talking about a tree. It's making reference to a being, a person. But the tree, the person who possesses knowledge of good and evil, you are not to consume of that teaching 
on what this person is going to tell you. That was the old serpent called the devil. Y'all catching this? All right. So you got to have knowledge of good and what else? Evil. You need to know a good woman and you didn't know an evil woman and you know a woman who have good and evil on her or in her. Two out of the three you're supposed to reject. Can you tell me which, what are they? What is it? Which one are you supposed to reject? Evil and good and evil. Both of them in the same category. Y'all catching that? Did he not say that? Now, did not good and evil appear to his wife later? I said, did it appear? Oh, wait a minute. I didn't mean to raise my voice. Let's go to Genesis. Where am I at? Genesis 2. Go to Genesis 2. And uh, no, go to Genesis 3. 3 and 1. Oh, you thought you need to know her taste and her style and, you know, that's going to come in and what she like and what she don't like. You better know is that joke any good for you. If you don't have no knowledge, you're watching football and basketball all the time and listen to what them guys tell you in the barbershop, you're going to be ignorant. Been there, done that. Get hooked up with the wrong thing. But because I understood that failure doesn't determine my destiny. I felt something there, boy. I made a decision. I don't talk, say what you want to say. I know how this thing's supposed to work, and I want a part of it before Yeshua will come back and take us out of it. I want to experience this thing. Went through hell and high water, but I got it. And hell and high water still come, but I deal with it now. <laughs> Y'all ready? Now the serpent was more cunning in the beast of the field, which uh, uh, Yah, Yah, Elohim had made, and he said to the woman, did he not? Did, did he say something to the woman? Who was this talking? This being that he told Adam to make sure he had knowledge of and don't participate, don't receive nothing this joker was saying. He went directly to his wife. And Adam had received instructions about this, but he didn't deal with it. You're seeing it now. So, to possess knowledge and not operate in is two different things. Y'all see that now. And the woman said to the serpent, no, he said, has, has Elohim the father indeed said you should not eat of every tree of the garden, that you shouldn't receive or talk to every being that's in the garden. That's what he was saying. Get the tree out your mind. Isaiah 6, 1, we are trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh. He's talking about a person, a fallen angel. Y'all seeing it? And the term garden is used, we got a whole lot in there, but one of the terms for garden is order. See, there's an order in the earth that Elohim set up to start his man off in. He planted a what? Garden eastward in Eden. Eden is a whole continent of Afra or Akabulam or what we call Africa. There was a garden, a place of order eastward in what? Eden. Eden is still there. Eden uh, I ain't doll it mean to see the door, to see paradise, a place of pleasure, a desirable spot, place to be in, eastward in Eden. He placed a place where the order of the kingdom was located. And when man sinned, that order, that port of order, that presence, that open presence of heaven was shut up. Disorder came in because they yielded to a lawless spirit. Y'all seeing it? And Yeshua came to give us our dominion back. And when he gave us that dominion back, order came with that dominion. The presence of heaven came with that dominion. Now is your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Because now I got the order, the presence of open heaven is opened back up over me and in me now. Now I have another place or a proper place to get started out of. So we, we don't have no excuses. We got the anointing that's present with us now. And guess what? The anointing don't move out when we sin. He's sitting there watching everything. Angels, right, recorded. Over in Revelation, he said he got books are going to be open other than the book of life, the book of works. We have to give account. It don't get erased. We have to give account. The blood does cleanse us of sin. We don't have the penalty of that, but we have to give account. This is why he said that we all are going to bow at his feet. We all, sinners and saints, got to give account. Those books going to be open and give account to the works done in these bodies, whether good or bad. All of it's coming up. 
good part about it, if our name is found in deep book, then it's dealt with. It's gone. But accountability is a priority in the kingdom. Ain't no you push it away, that's gone. It's gone relative to the Father holding things against us or sin having an access or a portal into our lives. But at the end, we got to see it. Look at the scripture. Well, I thought, I thought. That's what religious Christianity has been teaching you. And it promotes a uh, submission to the norm of society. You know, like some, the, this system, whatever the world do, the Christian system does. You know, the world get bug naked. Yet some Christians get bug naked. What Christian? They don't do it. They get bug naked. And they can't see nothing wrong with it because it's a norm. A norm is a part of the culture. Y'all see that? Norms, y'all remember that? What's normal, and that's why the enemy, you know, in years past, uh, mom used to say, turn that TV off. Hey, the, uh, that woman showing her Brazil, talking about the cross your hard bra. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't turn that, turn that off. Shoot, now you see the Brazil, the, the strings, and everything else. Why? Because it slowly moved in and became what? Normal. Now it's part of the what? Culture. Culture control the minds. Whoever, excuse me, whoever controls the minds control the culture. Whoever controls the culture can make whatever culture they desire. All right? Okay, now, so where am I? <clears throat> where am I? All right, 217. Let's look at Gen 217. So we looked at that, and I look at verse 20. What we need to know, so Adam gave, gave names, Adam gave names to all cattle, the birds of the air, every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not a, found a helper comparable to him. That translation is wrong. Even go look at the words, you know what's wrong. But for Adam, actually that uh, Bethane is in there, that olive uh, yud is in there, it means that something is missing. And what is missing for Adam is matzah, ezer, negad. A helper, excuse me, this is e ezer and negad. In verse 20, you will see matzah mentioned. So there was not found a what? Ezer, negad. For Adam. Y'all know what Negad is, a helper, not just a helper, that's very light, top surface, but it's spelled, what is it, uh, Ezer, Ein, Zen, Resh, to see the weapon man or to experience, have a revelation of the covenant of the word in the person's mind. Now, by being in covenant with the word, Isha, the woman, is able to see danger from afar off. She saw the enemy, but she got out of order and went into an attacking, aggressive warrior spirit. That was her husband's place. All she was supposed to do was say, look, that ain't right. Come on, handle your business. Instead of doing that, she handled the business, did she not? And messed up everything, right? Y'all catching this? And then negad. Of course, you know what negad means to be in the face of. Boldly opposite in physical appearance, but yet in the face of, and here's the communicative skills of a woman of Isha relative to her man occupying his time and being a friend to him. All of this is in there, but I'm going to keep moving. And then verse 23 said, and Adam said what? Now this is what? Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called Isha. He never said womb man because he didn't speak English. He said Isha, Aleph, Shin, Hai. Aleph, Shin, is a root word in the original language that spells fire. Our Elohim God is a what? All-consuming what? Fire. And then high means revelation, revealed to see heaven or the works in heaven in the earth. Now what happened is that her body came out of Adam's body. Her body was a revelation of the body that Elohim had already created and placed that male spirit in Adam, the male man. Y'all catch this? So Isha mean also high on the end, denote what come from. Isha, the woman, is what came from the fire of man. You remember over in Corinthians, you said a man, uh, the woman came from man, and man came through woman. Y'all remember this? So Adam, being a father, is the source of all human beings, all mankind. He is the source. Y'all catch this, right? This is why, and it's true, and I used to ask the question, now I know, why mama called dad, daddy James? She always just called him James. You know, now she called him daddy James. You know, and I heard one teacher saying, everywhere they have been, is all the same. As women mature more, 
instead of calling their husband by their first name, they'll stay outside calling him daddy. You know, whether they know it or not, the revelation is coming. That, that's where I came from. And he called her a baby because actually all women or Isha was Adam's baby. She came from him. Even though she was a full grown woman, she came out of him. Y'all catch it now? And we said, baby, hey, baby. And then, you know, and the women will call men babe a lot of times. That's why y'all not really saying baby. You don't know it, but now you know it. You will say babe because they actually should be saying daddy. Because my wife, you said, come on, daddy, or something like that. Or, hey, daddy. I be, mean, ain't your daddy. You told, you told me I wasn't your daddy. No, I'm kidding now. <laughs> you know how y'all be saying, you ain't my daddy. Or the, and you come back, well, what's that ring on your finger say? Who last name you got? And y'all get to arguing. Got bits of truth, don't even know it, then you get to arguing. Y'all seeing it now? Because he's the source. The source uh, provides sustainer. The body that women possess came from the man's body. Her spirit was created by Elohim the Father. And they are totally different. The bodies are different. They are different. You born a each man according to the kingdom rules and laws of procreation and creation, how the Father designed us. A male was born a male, a female was born a female. If you get an operation, uh, when you get judged, whether you say, well, you won't be saved, but still, you're going to be judged as a born male. Okay, what kind of operation you had? That book going to be open before that person go to hell if they don't change, because they're going, if they don't change, they violate the order of creation. That's, you don't break certain laws and still go to hell. It don't work like that. So if you get born again, you'll go get another operation and get changed back. I'm talking about the kingdom. I'm not talking about the world. world do what they want to do. They're doing what they are doing because they are sinners. They got a sin for nature. So don't be tripping when you see a transgender, a gay person and stuff like that. That's the world. You can't find none of it in the scripture. The scripture does not substantiate that. No, you can't bring up love. You got to bring up knowledge, even with that, okay? All right. So you see Adam had what? Knowledge understanding and discernment that this is not a man. This is a Isha. She came from me. Y'all see it now, brothers? He possessed that discernment. He possessed that, that knowledge, understanding. He looked up, looked down, said, so, whoa, there's some different parts on, mm, something different here. And this little different stuff is kind of making me feel a certain way. So, you know, this is different for me. And I appreciate this feeling. Now I got this feeling. I can't get rid of this feeling. That's why pornography is so detrimental, because once you see that, you want to see that more. You engage something. OK. All right. Now, go to the matter of fact. Now, let's look at um, man. Wow. Seven area. Where my clock at? I sure can't see it. I see it now. To walk around. I see it. OK. It's back good. It's back good. It's back good. I good. I can look over Will's shoulder there. All right, here go seven areas. I got just a few minutes that I'm going to touch on the uh, women, okay? Now, here, here are seven areas, seven, where a husband, father, a male, man need to know women. All right? Number one is, is her what? I'm, I'm going to go through them and come back and teach them. Is that all right? Number one is to know her what? Know her giftings outside of sexual activity. Thank you very much. And women... What I'm teaching, men and women need to know. Married and single need to know. It's not for married people. It's for everybody. You know, because you can misuse or abuse your sister, your mama, your cousin, not knowing their giftings. You need to know their giftings, okay? And then I'm, I'm come back and teaching. Let me just mention them now. And why was she made? That's her what? Purpose. Do you know the purpose of this woman that you are married to, this woman that you are dating? Do you know the purpose of your sister, of your mother? Your mama's not just there to feed you and get you out of jail. Right. Or to support you in your mess. That's not her purpose. That's why most act a fool at funerals and going home say, ah, I didn't treat my mama right. Ah. And the boy, oh, that's my mama, man. That's my mama. Why does your cause she got you out of jail? Hard head your whole life. Wouldn't listen to nobody or nothing, but she kept getting your rusty butt out of jail, so you say you love her. If she hadn't got you out of jail, you wouldn't be saying that. Truth is truth. Fact is fact. Come on. How 
uh, how was she made? That's the plan. We'll go back and teach you. You seeing it? What is her gifting? Why was she made a purpose? How was she made? What was the father's plan when he made this woman? Women, y'all need to know this as well as men need to know this about women. And then you got know what she is thinking. Now you want to just come in, hoo, hoo, ha, ha, and lay over. And if you're not saved, you'll smoke a cigarette. Joe's self. And she, now she turned over mad at you. And that's another teaching. <laughs> know what she is thinking. She ain't thinking about your knucklehead all the time. <laughs> Number five, know who she is talking to. That, that's right. Thank you, uh, Tori, for agreeing with me on that. Yes, you need to know who you're talking to. Well, shoes, he, well, shoes you don't trust me? It's not you. It's this enemy out here that I know that you might follow your mother, Master Izanigad, and, and go to try to engage him, and then we got a mess. Uh-huh. And if I know who you're talking to and who you're talking to know me, they know I possess a warrior, protective spirit, they might think twice about that conversation. And you spending too, you talking to mama all the time. You talking to sister and brother all the time. And they telling you stuff that your husband is not telling you. They feeding you stuff that they are not ordained to feed you. Uh, look at Genesis uh, 2 and 15 right quick. Go back to Genesis 2 and 15 right quick. Real quick, 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 quick. And watch this right here. Then uh, Yahweh, Yahweh, Elohim, took, I think it's an olive uh, 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 at in there too. I'm going to start mentioning that. Olive ta, that will describe whether he's talking about the word, Yeshua, dealing with Elohim, singular compound ending, Elohim, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But the scriptures identified who he's talking about, but that olive ta is left out of all the translations, all of them, all of them. And Yeshua said, I am the olive ta. We weren't talking about no first and last. He's talking about in the book of Genesis 1 and 1, in the original it reads, Barashi bara Elohim et ha shamel ha ares. In the beginning, Elohim created the word. Yeshua said, I am the olive ta. I'm the first that the father created in the beginning. You welcome. All right, but y'all stuck on Alpha and Omega. No Alpha Omega. Get that Alpha Omega mess out of there. You could have put A and B in that case. They mean what? Just the first and last letter of alphabet. Olive Tav is a total another whole different playing field in terms of revelation. I know you didn't know, but we getting to know, aren't we? In verse 15, then uh, uh, Yahweh Elohim took the man. Isha put him in the garden of Eden, that place of order where the presence of heaven was open to tend and keep it to Abad in the Hebrew and Shemar in the Hebrew. I'll go back and deal with that. And El Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, what? Saying. You see this? Telling him what to do, but who end up dealing with the serpent on this? You see it? So every man is a teacher. You have been commanded to teach, to speak. It does not mean a woman cannot teach. Get on up out of here. I got you too. It does not mean that. But in terms of receiving commands to teach instructions in order, that responsibility is going to rest on the head of that head of that family, that male, that you are to govern your home in the areas where the commands, the laws, the systems, and the precepts of the kingdom lies. The direction of the kingdom, that's your responsibility to direct everything that way. Y'all catch it? Encourage, spend money on books and uh, teaching tools and do this and be an encouraging motivator in your family, in your house for everybody to abide by the kingdom rules and laws. You don't make or dominate nobody. They see, they, I, I mean, they'll tell you, they pattern, they see me studying. They see me reading. Y'all catch it? They see me motivated about the word. Even one of my songs, oh, knuckle here, about one thing about dad, he tell me what I need to hear, what I wanted or not. Then we was at a little gathering. He said, Dad, you're doing what you love to do, aren't you? Because you're not around asking questions about the word. I just love it. You know, and stuff like that. He said, you really, that's what you really love doing. I said, yeah, you know it. He said, yep, that's my dad. Proud of it. You seeing it? So that's every male's responsibility. All right, now, uh, what she, know who she is talking to. See, I'm getting stuck on this. Know who, I'm going to come back and teach you, though, for real. I'm just mentioning, touching life. Know who your wife is. I know who my wife talking to. Whether it's a mother. Was a brother, 
and she's talking to somebody I don't think she need to be, you know, and she's pretty discreet, but the enemy can get in. That's where my position come in at. He made it like that for us to be dependent on one another. I don't, I don't know about that one right there. There was one person, I'm not mentioning her name. I, they, I just, I just, it's just something, just they, they, the tone of their voice just irritates me. Spiritually, it, it, I mean, it was just really, that's, I don't know, I know this and I know all that and it sounds good, but it's something that's really irritating me. And what it is, every male understand you are made up to logically challenge things. You're a warrior, protective spirit in you, whether you old knucklehead or not, that is going to rise up and challenge something that's not right. It's just naturally in there. I said, I just don't like, just, just, it, you know. And I tried to sit down and listen. I said, I can't do it. I, I just can't. You go and listen. I got to, you know. And I, and I told her. And stuff started coming out. Layers started coming out. Coming out, that's totally served. That relationship gone. Connection, everything gone. And I never say I told you so. Because I have to do, <laughs> you're welcome. I don't dominate her. I'm leading her by principle and precept. Once I do that, the Holy Spirit is obligated to deal with her. Now, who can, and she's not the type of woman who resists the Holy Spirit. I never would have married her. Y'all catch it? Don't marry a hard-haired woman who's going to resist God because she's fine. You're marrying some problems, some snakes. All right? Know what she is thinking. Who she is. Know her what? Singular. Know her what? Number seven, y'all pretty much got that, but it's some stuff you still don't know. Know her what? Know her body. Know it. I mean, I know that. I know most things, you know, I know that. But it's some other things you need to know about it's not made to be beat on, number one. So when I come back and teach this, we're going to really get into that, okay? All right. It's not made. It's not made. Oh, watch out, young people. And, and some of y'all old ones trying to be young. Her body wasn't made to be on display. Your wife round and half naked. I blame the husband for not having knowledge. Oh, I just want to see how everybody see that fine thing. I, man, they can't touch it. <laughs> you know, man. It's, yeah, man, it's mine, man. See something? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I know she fine, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all sin. It's all evil. It's all demonic. Okay? I know we're in a sexual inner. It's the culture is what make you freeze up when I say that. Well, then God make her like this and she so full of her beauty. They, they went out there buck naked like y'all think they were. Remember, the glory was on them. They had coverings. And Adam was able to see his wife in that state that she was created in because he was the only one was there. And his wife, but, naked, but nakedness, is for him only. I guarantee you when them kids came, they didn't see their parents naked. That's what happened. Y'all remember what uh, Cain did? You can see his father uncovered. You know what curse came up on him. All through the scripture, you're not... To see your mother, father, naked, or any other naked woman. That's pornography. But you want on display because you don't understand. Get up, get up, just look at somebody and say, whether it's a man, woman, if a, a camel's sitting by you, just say, get off display. You didn't know no better. Just following the culture of the world. I'm not bashing, no, that's just the culture of the world. The more sexy you are, the more pretty you are. The more attention you get. My wife is telling me, people get. Thousand different ways now for women to make their butt look bigger and, and beautiful. I said, um, do they supposed to be on display for everybody? Okay, all right, I see y'all don't like that. Let me move on. Let me get a little more before we stop here. All right, now, and, and I got scripture on everything. Everything, it covers that also. All right, here's a wife, Isha. Isha, let's look at Isha real quick and we're going to stop. And I told y'all, teaching of the kingdom, uh, 20 minutes, I'm going to do you injustice, all right? So we need to get used to learning. If we invest and we prove ourselves that we are really serious about the word, about the kingdom, you'll be like me. Uh, y'all through? I mean, I was just getting into it. Why y'all look at me like that? You get ready for change. I, ain't, I, I know what I'm doing. That's the Christian religious system. At first, word of faith teaching, if you didn't teach our, you didn't have no word. I mean, my pastor told me, if y'all can't don't have an hour you can hold and teach and not fill a bus or add in, you, you need more training. Now, even Word of Faith can kick back to 40 minutes and 30 minutes. You want to know why it's like that? Because the people are in control. The leadership is not in control any longer. The people are. That's the doctrine of Nicolaitans and Yeshua. So I hate that mess. 
I hate it. All right. A wife, number one need is what? Thought y'all would get off the hook, didn't you? Thought you had. All right. A wife, number one need is not a husband. Is that what's up there? Yes, it is. A wife, number one need is knowledge. See? See it? Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. You was agreeing. Your number one need is not a husband. Your number one need is not a Dunenberg back purse or bag. Your number one need is not jewelry. Your number one need is not a new car. It's not a job. It's not a career. It's not a baby. It's not a dog. Your number one need is knowledge. Okay? Now, let's just go through these and we'll come back to them. You need to know what? His vision. Y'all see this? If you're married to a man, you don't know his vision, just change. Find out what his vision is. I'm trying. He don't know. Well, you're in the right ministry. Right? Because we are teaching what the vision of man. Right there in Genesis 2.15. Is it there? Right? And you were designed to do what? Help, assist, support the vision that's in him. If you running after your vision and he got his vision, you got two visions, which is division and a house divided. All right. Man, y'all good this morning. Know your husband, father. I mean, know his purpose. Got to know his purpose. You got to study out. Know the general purpose of man. Know the general vision of mankind. If you're in a relationship, know this. And if you're married, definitely know what his vision is. You need to know what you need to be supporting. You need to know what his purpose is. Know your husband, father. That's a good one there when we get into it. Know because you ain't mad. You ain't mad. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. He's your source, your sustainer, your head protector, all of that. But you need to know that, right? And the men need to know that so they can understand is more than just paying bills. As a matter of fact, if we were designed to pay bills, why take on a liability and pay more bills? For what? Why? If you get married, you got some more bills to pay. Why marry a liability? Elohim never gave Adam a liability. Child, I just want to marry him so he can sit me down. Your lazy outfit you. Just lazy. Proverbs 31, that, that is not a lazy woman. Isha is not a lazy, was not a lazy woman. And still she is not a lazy woman. Because you're still Isha. He put everything in her that Adam needed to complete that vision. Whatever help he needed was in her. Don't that sound like an asset? Well, quit saying, I'm going to quit work when I get married. You go to work when you get married, helping him fulfill that vision. Know how he thinks. This is a huge one. I can't wait till we get back to this. Know how he, he is thinking about more than sex. An anointed man, a man who knows his vision, a man that's in the word, Actually, that's not what his mind is consumed with. So you can just lo loosen your, let your skirt down, you know, and, and cover your, your, your breasts up. Cover them up. You're driving him away. He don't want that. Everybody got that. I'm good, but that's what we've been taught. I'm not bashing nobody. If we've been taught that from prom night to get half buck naked and go celebrate and get ordained, what you think, what type of seed you think that planet? That planet is all right seed. And if you're guilty of it, just change. Know what he thinks. Men don't think like women. We, we process. We are slow speed, dial up internet. You all are the fastest speed internet that's on the market. You can give your son a backhand slap, backhand slap, plait your daughter hair, watch breakfast, go over your praise and worship. All at the same, just, just do it all at the same time. One, one set. And we, no, no, no. I need to do this first. When I finish that, then I'll come do that. Uh, uh, Larry, uh, um, uh, huh? So I said, okay, let me do this first, then I'll be right back. I mean, I'm, stop, I'm trying to go, and she called me. I'm trying to go do something. And if I go to you, I won't get this completed. Because men are designed to complete. You see how we help the women now? Y'all get all this stuff going, but it's just stuff going. Everything had to be completed in order. That's where we come in. We're, we're inter, interdependent. All right. Process. We'll get back to that. Know what he thinks in turn. No, know how he thinks. Process. Then know what he thinks. Friendship. That's a good one, too. 
know what he thinks. You ain't gonna know what he's thinking if you won't be a friend to him. Okay, how fine you is, how good you cook, if you hard to talk to and hard to deal with, you'll never find out what he thinks. See, only I got brothers just, he ain't married, so he's shaking. Now he finally <laughs> doing this, head, body, and everything, no one's saying, oh, I don't know what I should do. Let me just be still here. I don't want nothing burnt. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you can. <laughs> I see everybody. You need to be, if you're a friend, and, that, and we're going to look at get in that scripture. I'm going to show you that word in Titus. That's what he's actually talking about. Be a friend. Men like uh, uh, a woman who is easy to talk to. That's how Shakura, that's how she got him from you. She wasn't as fine as you, but she, she knew how to be a friend to him. And she stole that emotional uh, relate fellowship that supposed to have been yours. But you too busy being demanding, and I want it this way, and I want that that way, and you need to meet my need, and you, me, 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 my goodness. Shoes, who wanna, you know, okay, let me just meet your needs. and I want fellowship, I go talk to somebody else. So we had the pool hall on the way home. With the boys, one of them boys is a, is a, a woman boy. Not crossover, nothing like that, but it's, it's, I guarantee you there's a female up in there that's talking to him. I'm not putting no pressure on him. Anyway, let's keep going. Know his what? Need. Singular, right? And then know his what? As, as you mature and stuff, things change. Things change. And as you get older, you're going to find out things change. Ask them boys buying all that Viagra. They'll tell you. They will tell you. And ask some of these women that, you know, got to buy stuff. You know, got to get oil changes and lubricate and all that. Ask them. Things change. You learn. I mean, you as young, jump in all that stuff and see if you marry for that reason. You, you are headed for some problems. But if you live according to knowledge, you will understand not to put pressure on one another. Anyway, I said I review those, right? So I'm going to have to quit, so I'm just going to go over. We're going to go back and do those sevens. Did you know that a wife, a woman is a builder? Y'all didn't know that, did you? You thought you were just supposed to look pretty and, pant and go shopping. One of your primary overlooked giftings and anointing is the ability to be. What does Proverbs 14 and 1 say? A wise woman, this is where we're going to end it at, does what? A wise woman does what? She builds. That one, the Hebrew, a good one in the Hebrew is benah, and it, one of the good meaning is develop. You didn't know you was a developer, did you? That's why, man, if you are in construction and developing and stuff like that, there's your help right there to get it done. She is naturally a developer. Now, when you develop something, you take something that's already there <laughs> and develop it. See that? No, you want your bills paid. You want to sit down. I mean, What? A developer, a builder, she's going to build a house. Going to develop that thing. Those kids, you are being developed. That husband, whatever he, look, you are incubator, receive. Whatever he put in you, you develop it and give it back to him completed. Now, that's, that's awesome. I felt that. I'm still feeling this. It's so good. I just got to quit because I'm just happy. And I'm happy for the ladies. I'm happy for the men. Now, men, you know who you need to be looking at. Because the Holy Spirit don't give you a wife. He present her as your choice what you're going to do with her. Because he don't control our wills. She present presentation. Here she is. What you going to do? You want her? Nah, you know, I ain't ready yet. Good. You're not. <laughs> Y'all seeing it now? All right. And later, your presentation is not the outside. It's the inside. I got that piece on there, too. We'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. The most expensive part of a wife. That topic even sounds to it, don't it? The most expensive part of a woman. The main people who need to identify that are women. What is your most expensive and valuable part? Why are you looking at me like that? My time is up. See, I told you, I told y'all, Christian people, I'm through. Time in the word. <laughs> I'll say this because my wife. All right. She just notified me. I'm through. I'm stopping there. Receiver. This is good, baby.
Yeah, this is, you know, I'm feeling this. I was going to wait, but Holy Spirit said, go on and get into this. 